Holy Gospel according to Matthew for this first Sunday after Christmas. Now after the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up. Take the child and his mother, go to the land of Israel, for those who were seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This Gospel text is just almost too hard to hear. Just one week after Christmas Day, it's just too gruesome and awful to find its way into our holiday celebrations. But in an odd way, maybe that's exactly why we need to hear it. The killing of the innocents. Herod the Great. He's feeling that his base of power is threatened and he's going to do anything he can to secure his position and power, including the slaughter of any children in and around Bethlehem under two years of age. Now this is this this story is not out of character with the historical Herod the Great. He was, by all accounts, a very ruthless character. Yet there really isn't any historical evidence per se that this particular event actually took place but i really don't think that's the primary point here for matthew's narrative it is important that jesus make that sojourn to egypt for jesus is the fulfillment of the prophets and a saving figure like moses of course who also came and out of egypt to deliver his people. What strikes me as I hear this text this Sunday after Christmas is, you know, the ways of the world really haven't changed all that much. Anyone paying attention to almost any news channel knows that there remains horror and violence and ruthlessness in the world. Certainly we could point to Ukraine and Russia, but also in China and Afghanistan, parts of the African continent. Right here in the United States, we continue to rack up violent deaths and mass shootings year in and year out. Unfortunately, violence and ruthless behavior by those with power or those who want power who will do anything possible to hold on to their power or to achieve power 
those stories are part of our daily realities. This first Sunday after Christmas, we aren't allowed to dwell on a nostalgic, lovely picture of a baby in a manger, not for very long. This first Sunday after Christmas, we already are invited to join weeping and suffering with our God. When our children were little, I remember considering both the promise and the fears of their future. I remember wishing that I could take away all the pain that my children might know, all the danger, all the evil. I dreaded the day when some difficulty, some evil might enter their world that I couldn't keep away. Though our children are now adults, I still fear this. And of course, now it extends to my grandchildren. I'm sure many of you have felt this same thing. In every newborn baby, there is the promise of a, of a, a something beautiful for the future. Yet also we need to recognize there is danger, illness, and evil that hovers too close. If this hadn't been for true for Jesus, then, you know, he might not have been as relatable as a human being as he is. In some ways, it is scandalous that the God of the universe would allow the tyranny of some little worm of a king like Herod the Great, and that this child of promise would have to be carried some 200 miles away to a foreign land to be hidden so that he is not murdered. It is scandalous that children in our own towns are too often hungry, neglected, abused, and afraid. It is scandalous that women in some places in the world are abused for wanting the chance to go to school. It is scandalous that children in our own country can't even feel safe at school sometimes. It's scandalous that the world stands by as children of any culture suffer deeply from hunger or from the triumph of evil. In Jesus, our ancient Christian doctrine says that God has taken on humanity in all of its forms. Imagine Jesus experiencing delight and wonder as he discovered the things that our children and grandchildren have discovered. Seeing his fingers for the first time, saying his first words, running to his parents' arms, when he's afraid or feeling joy, playing on the floor in his father's shop. And then life is threatened by a dangerously insane ruler, and this poor family has to run, desperate, terrified, hiding, determined to survive somehow. I wonder if some of Jesus' earliest memories were of sensing this fear maybe in his parents voices as they told him no you can't play outside as they hid him until they were beyond danger i wonder if jesus remembers poverty and homelessness and what it was like to live in a foreign land as that little family struggled to survive, they surely experienced grief over the children who were not saved. And maybe some of them were family friends, who knows? But survival for this holy family likely was not an easy proposition. Consider it. Do you think Joseph, Mary, and Jesus were warmly received in Egypt? Probably not. 
as they and other refugees arrived, their Egyptian neighbors and officials might have complained about them. They dressed differently. They, they worshipped in a different way. They shop for hard-to-find foods. They have strange holidays. They don't respect our local customs. I wonder if those early life experiences and the stories recounted by Jesus' parents helped to shape his ministry later on, especially his ministry to people who were in difficult situations, who were set aside, who by illness or race or, or a place of origin were pushed aside. Remember in Jesus, we, we see someone who war warmly welcomes and accepts people across all boundaries, from different places, different religions, different races. He eats with sinners, laughs with them, welcomes the outsider. This is real incarnation. And maybe when we find ourselves in Christmas nostalgia and joy, we might experience Jesus as a boy discovering new things and delighting in that. Maybe when we are struggling ourselves, when we have loss or illness or grief, we might remember that Jesus knew deep suffering as well. And maybe when we wonder who cares about all those strangers, those other people at our own borders, we might look at Jesus as a young boy and be reminded that his family too was forced to flee a place of violence and find at least temporary safety. Maybe this is the radical truth and beauty of Christmas. As the season fades, its complex story lives on in each of us. How will we reflect its light? How will we be companions to the lonely? How will we be people who care for children in our communities? Maybe you do some things. Maybe you volunteer at a local food pantry. Maybe you care for a family member or a friend or a neighbor. Maybe you are a courageous soul who supports those who flee from tyrants and fear into a place where they hope for safety. We may have to choose at times whether to be ruled by faith or to be ruled by fear of others. Our choices maybe can be aided by remembering the entire story of Jesus. Without the hard parts, it's a sweet fairy tale, but as we recognize and own the harshness of life, including the life of Jesus the refugee, that can give our faith, our reality, a deeper sense of purpose and meaning. And, a, and when we allow our faith and our courage to surface, we open ourselves to receive the wonderful joy of welcoming others into our community and our lives as well. And it just might be that there, in the most unlikely of places, we will find the face of God. Amen.